Hey there, Lick and Riffers, and welcome back to yet another awesome finger style lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which you're going to continue your adventures with the blues tuning, the A9 blues tuning. Now, last month I showed you the ropes, I taught you how to arrive at this tuning, and if you don't remember, it's only one half step down on one string, okay? It's the standard tuning, standard tuning with the D string tune down half a step to C sharp and that's the magic of music suddenly it's A9 so we tested the waters I showed you the basics and now I'm gonna show you the more advanced ideas and when I say advanced I mean sophisticated in sound but it's not necessarily that much harder to play because again as we discussed in the previous lesson you have the ninth and the seventh inside the chord so it's already sophisticated okay you don't have to do much in order to create elaborate sounds this is elaborated enough okay this is sophisticated enough Again, no hard work. That's why I love this tuning so much. It doesn't require any hard work at all. So when we want to create a little bit more sophistication, we want to think about harmonies, okay? Harmonies. So the first thing that I want to do when I think about harmonies is I think about this. Okay, I think about five on the first string and six on the third. This is an A major chord. And you can connect the D9 chord to it. Instead of uh, just going... Which is nice, but you don't want to repeat this idea too many times in a row. So sometimes you want you want to play the open first string and sometimes you want to keep that mutual note. So remember you have 7 and 5 on strings 1 2 and 3. And since you have 6 on the third string for the A chord you can use that as a transition. Okay? You can hammer on 5 to 6. Okay? Or play the 5 first. Okay? Okay? Use that high A note for the transition. Okay? And that immediately creates a little bit more sophistication. Now, having said that, you can play the seven and seven on strings one and three together. Now, you remember that we superimposed the D7 chord over the A chord. that pentatonic sound instead of 
that A major sound, remember? You can superimpose the D7 chord over it. You can do a little bit of the same by playing seven and five on strings one and three over the D chord. Now, if you want to, you can play eight and eight as well. Okay? If this works for you. Now, you can also bar and play eight, eight, and eight, seven, seven, seven. I think it's a little bit too much. Okay? I love the space between those two strings, strings one and three. Okay? And then you can connect it to five and six with A. Now, the funny thing is that you can do the same thing on A because it's a turnaround. So you have five and six on strings one and three with the open A bass, and then you have seven, eight, and nine on both strings. Okay, so. So you have a turnaround. And if you take five and six down one fret and then another fret, you have another turnaround. So you can play something like this. Right? You don't have to play the whole thing, of course. You can just... Yeah, you can stop here. then play the other half and descend down. Now, before we get to the E9 chord, I want to show you another turnaround. You can take the 9 and 9 and take them up to 12. Hey, this is also a turnaround. It's all A to A. It's all A7 to A7. This is A7. This is A. This is A. This is A7. So it's all good. You can just use portions of this. And then when you get to E, you can do the same thing. Yeah, you can play 7 and 9 on strings 1 and 3, or you can play 9, 8, 7. And use turnarounds all the way. Now, um, there's another thing that you can do here which is the ending turnaround. Now, the ending turnaround is different, okay? These are turnarounds that you can solo with, but the ending turnaround is different. It's also very, very simple. It's five, four, three, two on strings two and three. Okay, so it's, it's this. Now, you can play the five on the first string as a connecting note. Okay, it's, it's still five, four, three, two. Okay, you can play it any way you want, uh, as long as it, you know, feels good to you. If it doesn't feel good, just don't play it. Remember the D7? Okay, now for extra sophistication, by the way, try to end 
on the ninth. Okay? Okay, that open second string. Or the second string with the bar on the next chord. See? Second string. The ninth is always a strong note. my mind I was going for something else but my fingers wanted to play something different it happened um, and before I show you the ultimate turnaround okay the jazzy turnaround the 6251 turnaround I want to mention that you can play those chromatic notes okay separately as well okay just not like this, not, you know, one after another, so... Okay, if you time it correctly, you can do that, but it's too much chromaticism. I suggest just... Okay, just choose one string to chromaticize. Even on the uh, the A chord, it works the same way. Now, a good trick is if you chromaticize one string on one chord, chromaticize a different string on another chord. Okay, so if you chromaticize the first string or the second string on the E chord, then chromaticize the third string on the D chord. And then you get a motif. Okay. Now remember, you have the 12. Okay, and then you can go to 7 for the D chord. Okay? You can chromaticize and continue the turnaround on the next chord. Now, that final turnaround, the 6 to 5 turnaround, let's say you finished a round. This is a 6-2-5. You have the F sharp 7. Now, you bar the second fret. That's it. And you play strings 2, 3, 4, and 6. And then you have B7. So you play 2, 2, and 2 on strings 5, 4, and 3 with the open second string. That's B7. And then you have the E9 again, any way you want to play it, and then you go back to A. So you end it around, you finish on A, and then you play the turnaround. So forth. Okay, so uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Bye for now.